What's going on, people? What's going on social media? What's going on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube channel at Alan the Bishop? Um, that yeah, on, on YouTube, okay. What's Facebook? How you doing? I know I'm going live with you guys as well. Uh listen, I want to say I want to make sure everybody's okay. Everybody's doing all right, everybody's feeling okay, and I I it's good to be on tonight. Uh, tonight here, it, it, where I'm at, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, where you're listening to it might be 7 o'clock or you might be around the world. I don't know. But what I will say is this. I want to thank everybody for the support you've been giving me so far. We've had a really good run so far. And, you know, looks like God is doing some amazing things, some great things, some powerful things. And tonight I just want to get into the meat of some things, guys. Um <laughs> Before before I get into the this topic that I'm going to be talking about tonight, um, I really would like to um, give a huge shout out to Nawe Africa. Um, listen, man, I, I've been praying this week and and seeking God's face uh, for a um, uh, j just God's voice, just what He's saying. And you know, God speaks so clearly. Uh, I, I want people to know that tonight. God sp speaks very clearly. And he don't he doesn't just speak to those uh, that that are uh, in the church building. I want you to know that there are people um, that may not be a part of your congregation that God speaks to. And I'm not talking about those folks you see on the street sometimes that going crazy, doing some different things. I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about real people, man, speaking, uh, speaking life uh, um, from from God. And how do I know that? How do you know that, Bishop? How do you know that, Alan Dub Bishop? How do you know that, brother? How do you know that? Whatever you want to call me, it's okay. That's all right. My experience has been throughout 22, 23 years, I've met people along the way that are that do not belong to a church, don't belong to anything, and they are absolutely speaking into my life and somebody I didn't I didn't think I didn't think it would it could happen that way because as you read the scripture you almost feel like uh, God don't speak to anybody that is not part of the fold but you don't know who's in the fold and who's not so I'm not gonna get into that tonight but I do want to talk about something tonight a topic is uh, you know how do I love my enemy and I think that. There are a lot of things as humans, man, we do wrong. There's a lot of things that we do wrong. We're not doing we're not doing the right thing all the time. Hold on. Okay. They're not doing the right thing all the time. Although you feel like you are doing the right thing, it just it hear me. There are things about the scripture, about God, about the Bible. Um, there are things, man, that we just don't um a lot of times we miss. I guess I guess that's what, what I'm going to say. But going back, I want to give, give a huge shout out to Nawe Africa. Uh, big shout out to uh, Pastor Victor Tavi. Um, those are my followers that follow me. I want you to follow Nawe Africa. That's N A W E Africa. I want you guys to do that. Follow that. Um, I am heavily involved with Nawe Africa. I mean, heavily involved. Um, we, a couple weeks back, or maybe even three weeks back, we did a, we did a summit, uh, about finances, about entrepreneurship and how, how, how God's people should be opening up businesses and contributing to, uh, the kingdom. And I, and what we mean is there are things that people need that we should not depend on the government for. And so now Africa is just, is, is not just a worship, uh, uh, ministry. This ministry that I'm a part of, that I, I am proud to say I'm a part of, I belong to. I am so proud that um, I that God led me to this ministry. This ministry has been uh, such a blessing. <laughs> All right, Renee, you know how much I love you, Renee. I see you. I see. I know your phone is messing up. Watch me later, Renee. You can also uh, go ahead and go to go to um, um, alandebishop.podbean.com. Uh, tomorrow it'll be on uh, Podbean and it'll also be on Spotify. So you, if you have Spotify tomorrow, it'll be up. This live broadcast will be up tomorrow. Renee, you know how much I love you, and you are Renee. You are my um, uh, 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 my marketing director. 
for um, for Allen Hall LLC, uh, No Laughing Matter Comedy Tours. And so we just we'll be back in business in 2022. But I'm so glad you're a part of it. And you, you know how much I love you. You've been just a great part of what we've been doing. And I, I couldn't do that without you. Thank you for for taking care of uh, of, 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 of the business. You, you are just amazing. Um, my other Renee, too, I want to say what's up to you. Renee, uh, um, uh, my 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 Assyrian sister, uh, <laughs> Shamala, I just want to tell you that um, uh, you're recovering from from wrist surgery. And um, Renee, I just you, you have you have a, a awesome uh, podcast on Spotify as well. Uh, and uh, um, of memory, I got it. Uh, the Cassaba, Cassaba, the Cassaba. There it is. The Cassava Podcast. I, I think I'm saying it right, but Renee, if you hear this other Renee, if you hear this, um, definitely uh, remind my 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 followers and people that's following the podcast and the live show tonight exactly what your podcast is. Listen, we're going to, um, like I said, I'm going back. I'm just I'm just thankful that God has led me to a ministry uh, because most of you guys don't know, and I'm gonna get to my topic tonight. But most of you guys don't know that. About 18 years ago, God spoke to me in a very real vision. It wasn't even a dream. I mean, I was asleep, but I was, I, I, God placed me uh, where I was going to be uh, in, in my life, in my walk. And and, and that place was Africa. And I'll, let me give you a, just a short version of what that looks like. I I fell asleep one night. I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't, I wasn't watching nothing about Africa. Matter of fact, I was telling God, listen, send me anywhere you want to send me. You ain't got to send me to Africa. Cause I'm, cause, cause I, what? Cause I'm, look, cause I'm black. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Most people that look like me uh, are are Israeli. I just shocked a whole bunch of people that are listening right now. A lot of people that look like me is Israeli. They they are from Israel, and so they was in Africa. And those are some of the people that were uh, gathered as slaves and brought to America. But I said, God, why? 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 I, send me anywhere. And I really wasn't asking God to send me anywhere, but I was saying, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be your hands and I'll be your feet, God. Okay. That's what I was saying. So one night I fell asleep, man. It, it had to be 18 years ago now. And I, in this vision, I remember uh, looking up in the sky. It was such a beautiful sky. I mean, I've never seen a sky that beautiful ever. And I've, I've been alive 45 years. And that was the only sky I seen in this vision that was amazing. So I'm looking in the sky. It's like the bluest, best blue. I can't even describe what blue this is. I don't, I don't know if they have it in the Crayola crayon section, okay? All I do know is this, that it was amazing. So then I looked down at my feet. And of course, yeah, I could see my feet. Yes, my feet are beautiful. They're awesome. Uh, Beautiful are those that bring the message, the beautiful feet, right? Am I saying that right? And uh, that brings the message of the Lord, right? Okay, so here we go. My feet was beautiful. They weren't ashy. They weren't cracked or nothing. They was just nice and and, and beautiful, moist, uh, lubricated, very nice. And I was, I looked down at these awesome looking sandals, right? Not, I don't know what kind of sandals Jesus had. I don't know. So I'm not saying they were Jesus sandals. They were my sandals in my vision. So I looked down. And I was on, uh, there was sand and then there, there was dirt and uh, uh, like clay type of dirt. But it, it started to become solid and I can feel the heat on my body. I can feel the sun, the heat on my body. And I began to walk towards this, um, this big uh, auditorium. And people were running in, flooding in, worshiping God, singing praise in, in the native language. I don't know what that language was. Maybe it was Ibu, it was it was Swahili. I don't know. But I I, I in my in my dream, uh, I understood it. I understood that uh, these people was worshiping God, asking, telling God thank you. They love him. So I, I get excited and I begin to like walk fast towards this. This um this auditorium, very beautiful, brand new auditorium, okay? And there was worship going on in this auditorium. As I got closer to this auditorium, as I got closer to this auditorium, I began to see like military or police, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and they begin to rush, run in, and they begin to start shooting. They're shooting. Um, at the people, 
But the people wasn't the people wasn't falling. The, the, they were just shooting. And as I ran into this auditorium, it began to slow down. And I and I seen people worshiping God like ah, you know what I'm saying? Speaking in tongues. People were just praying. And then all of a sudden it stopped. And I and I remember looking up in this auditorium. And I be in, in my little side, my little side views. I seen all these people worshiping, all these people worshiping. But at this moment, I was on a, I was lifted up. Uh, I was uh, looking down now at all the people that was in here worshiping God. And I seen all these these military. They was they was angry. They was upset uh, uh, about the fact they was worshiping God at this capacity. And I begin to weep. I mean, cry in this dream. I never forget it. And I yelled out in this dream, in this vision, I will go. And I kept saying it over and over and over. I will go. And I just, uh, and, and, and at that moment, at that moment, there was, there was peace. I opened my eyes. I was doing it closed, right? That's weird. I, my eyes were closed in my dream, but I, but my actually, I, it, it doesn't matter. Y'all know what I'm saying, okay? If you've ever had that experience with God, um, you're in another dimension. You're not even, hear me, it, it's a total different situation. So, <laughs> so I, I opened my eyes and every, and it was just peace, man. Peace that I've never felt in my entire life. It was amazing. And people, and the, the soldiers begin to worship God. They put their weapons down. Uh, they begin to take the clothing off that they had as the representing the 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 uh, the, uh, the the police force or whatever they were, um, and they begin to worship God. And then I woke up in tears coming down my eyes, and I knew that God spoke to me and told me I was going to Africa. I knew I was in Africa. It was not a question. Oh God, where was I? I mean, I could have been anywhere. I could have been in Abu Dhabi. You know, I could have been in Egypt, which which is in Africa. But I was. I I know that I was in Africa, the heart of Africa, wherever that is. I did not know where. I just knew I was in Africa, and so I said to myself, "I'll never say anything to anybody about this because if I did, that means I really have to go." So. Fast forwarding this to why I'm talking about Nawe, Africa. I have had uh, ample opportunity to go to Africa with um, with with uh, 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 with Dr. Sam Huddleston, uh, with the Simmons guy. They go out to Ghana. Uh, had an opportunity to go out there all the time. Had an opportunity to go uh, uh, with some other mission mission groups. And uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. The, the, the timing wasn't right, or something was 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 not. Um, uh, it wasn't timing for God, I guess. The first time I was going to go to Africa, I was going to go to Ghana uh, um, uh, with Dr. Sam Huddleston. I was going to go with that team that he takes a team every every year, every two years. I, I'm not sure uh, now how, how, you know, because of COVID. But check this out. So I I had a tumor on my tongue. I had to be removed. So it was weird. It just it, it popped up, right? I mean, God healed me, touched me. I mean, whatever, right? And so the, the tumor was 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 non-cancerous, uh, and it was at first, and then it wasn't. They took it out. I, I had to recover. But my um, what I call my ministry son, which which I adopted him now, uh, when he was younger, is uh, Bryant McDonald. Uh, 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 he 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 went in my place and had a greatest time. But so I had ample opportunity to go, and it never happened. And then ministry really kicked off with young with the youth group and and uh, outreach ministry and certain things. And so I just didn't uh, working and stuff like that. I didn't have an opportunity, but I can tell you this, not too long ago, uh, several months back, God placed me and, and, and pastor Victor Tavi, uh, our, our paths crossed. And so I just want to give a shout out to Nawe Africa, pastor Victor uh, Tavi. I want you guys to go and follow, uh, follow him, follow Nawe Africa. That's N A W E Africa, Africa. I want you to follow them, uh, Christine and Elizabeth. I want to, you ladies are amazing, just great leaders. And um, listen, we've just been praying and asking God to do some amazing things with Nawe Africa. It's grown to 18 plus countries, listen, in Africa, and it's going to double. Hear me, everybody listen right now. 
it is going to double during my prayer time this week. God has been speaking to me about double, the, the, the word double. I'm going to double. I'm going to double, double portion of anointing, du uh, double your ministry, double the, the donations, double. God's giving the word double. He's going to double these things happening. It is going to double. So I don't know who's that for. I know it's for me first during my prayer week. And I can tell you this, that um, there are things that's about to fall off. Shackles are about to fall off. Shackles of poverty is about to fall off. Shackles of addiction is about to fall off. And you could be addicted to anything. Don't just say drugs and alcohol because, listen, a lot of people are not addicted to drugs and alcohol, but they are addicted to certain things. Some people are addicted to themselves. They're addicted to how they look. There, people are addicted to whatever. You listen. There is an addiction for everything in life, and you can be addicted to those things. So when so when people are talking, I, I don't speak. I speak outside the box of of drugs and alcohol. Those are just symptoms. See uh, of what's really going on in somebody's life, and so that's what I'm talking about tonight. Is uh, 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 how do I love my enemy? Matter of fact, who is my enemy? Who is my enemy? And we got we to gotta talk about that. So before I really get into that, let me talk about this for a minute. Those that are watching right now, I've heard this phrase. God's been showing me this phrase. I've heard it through uh, online. I'm hearing it from people that have been called me, text me, message me. They People are feeling like they have so much sin in their life. If they go into the church, the church is going to blow up and burn up, okay? <laughs> That's funny. Let me tell you something, people. Don't kid yourself. When the scripture said Jesus died for every sin, there is nothing you can do that will eliminate the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. See, you y'all don't want to hear that tonight. Y'all don't really want to hear that tonight, okay? I, I, I'm not even going to say it again. There is no sin today or ever that, hold on, let me, that will, let me put it a different way. There's nothing you've ever done or will do, okay, that will stop God from loving you or stop what Jesus did on the cross more than 2,000 years ago. I hope somebody heard that. And if you really if you really understand it, I want you to say praise the Lord or hallelujah or thank you, Jesus. Because I, I got to tell you something. There are too many people. There are too many people that don't want to come to God because they believe they got to enter into a church. Now, I know some of my religious folk, and I, you, I'm saying religious because I'm not religious. I'm not religious. I'm going to say it again. I'm not religious. Religion has a lot of tradition, and a lot of tradition has blocked God from doing a lot of good things. All you got to do is read the Old Testament. Some of you guys don't know this, but God left Israel a long time ago. Right? God left Israel a long time ago, and they still was doing that tradition. They still was doing everything traditional. God wasn't there. He left. He was out. Said his spirit went through the Kidron Valley, boom, and exited out. He, he said, I'm out of here. I'll be back. He came back when Jesus, when he, he sent Jesus to, 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 to mend those wounds, to mend that, to, to build a bridge between, uh, between his creation and the creator. So I, I don't get why people feel like they, they've committed so much sin that, that they can't even step foot in a church because they're not welcome. And I'm going to tell you why they have that feeling. I'm going to tell you why people have that feeling. It's not because of God. It's because of us. The church is all of us. We've made a decision for God. And we're telling people God does not accept them. Because we don't accept them. Oh my God. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Some of y'all religious folk. Y'all got, got to hear me for a minute. I'm just going to speak the truth. Some, some, some of y'all religious folk hear me because you don't accept the people. You're, you're, you're trying to stand in for God and say, God don't accept them. What are you saying, Bishop, that we can do whatever we want? No, Paul said that'll give you no license to sin. 
That don't give you no license to sin. That just means you can go to God and he will forgive you of your sins because of his son, Jesus Christ. See, this is the problem. This is the problem, guys. And now that's why I'm speaking on this. God gave me this, okay? And then, and then it was in my Bible app today. It was this scripture. I said, oh, my God, I'm going to just use this scripture, okay? So how do I love my enemy? Number one, first you need to recognize who your enemy is. Who is your enemy? Who, uh, who, who, is, who is your enemy? Who is your enemy? I'm going to let you figure that out. I can't tell you who your enemy is. Let me tell you something. Everybody here listening have a family. You have a family member. You have cousins. You have uncles, aunties, uh, you or aunts, whatever you want to say. Your aunt, your aunt. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you got best friends. You have uh, family friends. You, 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 you got all these people, work friends. You got uh, jobs. You got uh, people you work with. All these different things, right? Some of the closest people to you will hurt you the most. I'm going to say that again. Some of the closest people to you will hurt you the most. You don't believe me? Just look around for a minute. Some of us that have been in church for a long time, go to church and sit down. A lot of us has been uh, stuck in a way to where we feel like if a person comes into the church and all of a sudden in 90 days or 60 days or 30 days, they don't resemble you, then they're not saved. Now, there are some people that never give their heart or their life to God, okay, which is fine. Uh, but that's really up to God, okay? <laughs> that's when I miss you, man. You know, you know, I've been so busy, but I, and I missed my podcast last week, but I'm glad you're on, my brother. God bless you, Ashwin. God bless you, Ashwin. Uh, I got a series coming up. I want to say the second Friday of August. I have a series with another gentleman. I'm going to have you and another gentleman on, but we'll talk about it this week. I'm traveling next week, but I'll call you on my way um, uh, uh, to Nevada, Ashwin. Love you, bro. I love you. A lot of times, we, 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 we let's get right to it. Let's get right, let's get right back into it, guys. A lot of times we say, um, and let's talk about people that's in the church. Uh, we, 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 we judge people based on what we don't like and not, not about God. So people say, oh, God don't like this. God don't like that. What you need to say is the truth is, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like you doing this. I don't want you doing that. See? See, the, the scripture says in the Bible, all those that call upon my name shall be saved. So. We cannot preach a gospel saying that this conditional who God accepts. God accepts the person that says, here I am. Here I am. Can you save me? Right? If, 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 if 40 people is, is, is about to drown in the ocean, the Coast Guard is not thinking, I'm only going to save the people I like. He's thinking, I got to save all these people. Not just the person I like. Oh, I like the way that guy looked. So I'm going to save him from drowning. No, no. See, the believer's job is to help. You can't save nobody. To help people get from one area of life to the next. And that's and that's through what we said the scripture. You know, we're talking about Jesus tonight. So let's get back to the enemy. Who is my enemy? Your enemy is not who you think it is. Now, I want you all to ponder on that. Now, look, let's think about something here. A lot of times, we put a lot of stuff on the quote-unquote devil, Lucifer, the enemy, but it's really us. It's all right. You may have not heard that in church, but you're going to hear it tonight and take it to the throne. A lot of times, our grievances... Our anger, our um, discontent, we blame it on the devil. Or we say, oh, that's just the devil. No, that's you. That's humanity. There's a lot of things that the devil 
It's like, man, I didn't even know I was going, I was doing that. But I'll take the credit. It's good, right? Dark entities. Well, I, okay, I guess that's good. It is you, my friend. It's you, brother. It's you, sister. It's 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 us. You ever heard the phrase, the devil made me do it, <laughs> right? Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. No, it is you. It's your thought process. It's your evil desire. It's who you are, and you need to put that in check. And that is what Jesus was talking about here, okay, in the scripture. Let me read the scripture real quick, guys, so you guys get a better understanding of what I mean. Jesus said in Luke 6 and 35, but love your enemies. Do, are we doing that today? Let's just stop right there. Are we doing that today, family and friends? Or are we just conditional loving people that we get along with? I, I'm i not perfect. That's why I'm speaking this. I don't, I don't like certain people around me all the time. That, now, let me give you another thing. That doesn't mean that you become people's best friends. That just means you need to love your enemy. You know why? Because at some point we were all enemies to God. And this is why, because of the separation. There was no sacrifice. If you if you if you're reading the scripture and you're talking about the Bible, there was no there was there, there was always a there was a gap there. Okay, so that's why Jesus said, "But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return." Are we living in that type of world today? Are we? And let me give you let me give you guys something. I I'm gonna read the scripture. I promise you, I'm gonna read the scripture. I I learned from my. You guys see my buddy Ashwin. What's up, Aaron? How you doing, brother? Brother, I can't wait to come to California, man, so I can hang out with you guys, man. CVP. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had to throw it out there. Me and my buddy Ashwin did a show uh, a couple months back. You guys go find it on YouTube. We talked very lengthy about some very good issues, man. It was amazing. Go back on my YouTube channel and find uh, with me and Ashwin Prasad. We did, we did something really good. Now, check this out. I'm not a Democrat or Republican because that limits that, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It was what I'm looking for. Uh, that caps my identity. That's who I am then, right? But I can tell you what I am. I am an American independent believer. That's who I am, okay? I'm a, I have a conservative thought process. I have a conservative, conservative ideology, which I think a lot of people have. And I'm going to get too much into politics because I'm going to do that in a couple of weeks. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty of all this vaccinating and all this, uh, what's going on with the uh, the audits in Arizona, and then Georgia's next, and then um, Pennsylvania's next. And we're going to see how corrupt we're in the scripture about enemies, how corrupt men and women can be. Oh, my God. I know some of y'all don't want to hear this because some of y'all thought, man, Alan, uh, you know, it feels good hating a Democrat. It feels good hating Republicans. It feels good hating liberals. It feels good hating uh, conservatives because that's what you're supposed to do. They've done something against me. I want to bring y'all back. I'm going to bring y'all back. Can we dislike the direction of what different ideologies are are um, uh, are going? Yes, we can. But you can't do be too extreme, uh, family and friends. You can't be too too liberal. You can't be too conservative because you need the balance. You need the balance. I'm. I I'll get to that in a minute. So, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. Somebody say great with me. Um, and you will be sons. I know, so we got to say daughters now. Sons and daughters, okay? But it means the same thing. There's no gender difference. When say sons, it means, it means men and women in the scripture, okay? Sons of the Most High. Elohim. The Hebrew is Elohim. The most high God, that's in Greek, of course, but the most high God. You'll be children 
or sons, you can use the word children too, sons of the most high. For he, there's another pronoun there, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Oh my God, somebody needs to repent. Hear me. Are you showing mercy to those you claim that is your enemy? Are you showing mercy? Are you showing goodness? The Bible says do good. Now, I hear a lot of people say, man, I'm a Christian man, but I hate them liberals. I don't like the liberal thinking pattern as well. I don't hate them, though. Family and friends, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I'll make fun of them. I'll joke about them. I laugh at them, but I don't hate them. If I see a brother broke down, I'll help him fix his car. I'll get some gas for him. I'll call AAA to help him get it towed to where he need to go. I, let me tell you something, friends and family. That's, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to tell you this. If humanity got together and said, we are not going to let the Democrat or the Republican Party separate us as Americans, because that's what you are. Politicians are Democrat. Pol politicians are Republican. You just vote that way. You are an American voter. You are an independent American voter. I'm telling you now that in order to love your enemy, you need to know who your enemy is. The scripture says you only have one enemy. The scripture says you only have one enemy. Sometimes we feel a person is our enemy, but they're really not. They just don't understand us. Now, you may say, well, Bishop, what about all these people killing each other in the street? I grew up around some of that, okay? And I understand that people are get angry, and you are my enemy. You killed my brother. You shot at my sister. You beat my mom. You, you, you robbed me. You stole my car. Uh, 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 you took my woman. You took my wife. You cheated on me. Uh, 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 you know, you're my enemy. See? We have to be careful who we say who's our enemy. Okay? So how do I love my enemy? How do I do that? How do I love my enemy? The scripture is very clear. I'm going to just go over it real quick. Love your enemies. Do good and lend to them. I have many enemies that was enemies in my life. Um, years years ago, but as we had a conversation, guess what happens? We became friends, and in somewhat best friends, some of them. So I want you guys to hear me on that tonight. We have to stop blaming the devil on everything that we do as a human human action. We have to say, "Oh my God, that is a that is a fault in my life, and I need to fix. That. I need to meditate. I need to pray. I need to." I need to uh, 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 get myself to a to a point where I'm not doing that all the time. I need to clear my, my myself from that. Okay. Okay. And, th th and listen to me. And I know how you feel. I want you to go down your list. You have a list in your mind <laughs> of who your enemy is. Oh my God. My neighbor just, if he just, oh, if he keep watering my side of the grass, my neighbor's tree is shedding on my car, right? <laughs> Why are they always looking at me when I'm going to work? They don't like me. You got a list of enemies in your mind that is not your enemies. I'm going to say it again. Some of these people just don't understand you. They don't understand you, uh, family and friends. Let me, let, me, let me tell you this as well. Let me just bring this out. Church, everybody that walks through those church doors is not going to change overnight. There's nowhere in the scripture you can find it. I, I don't care where, where you look. 
Nobody changes overnight. I don't care if they accept Jesus in their heart and in their soul. And they say, God, change me. It's not going to be overnight. Yes, yes, there's some instances where there's a miracle. Uh, somebody was just fed up. But listen, one of my mentors in the financial world, um, Hector Negretti, said this to me. And he, need, he he's writing, he's going to write a book. I'm prophesying that he's going to write a book about this, a little short little paperback. It's going to be, you know, just a little, little something. People want to change their life, but they don't want to change their life. And every time I, and uh, every time I, um, they, they are complaints, Ashwin, they are complaints. And every time I, um, I think about that when people, people come to the Lord or they, they, they want to change their life. And after a week or so, two weeks, we're getting irritated with these folks. Irritated. That's why Jesus said, I'll leave the 99 and go after the one. The 99 are already, they got it together, but the one, this guy really needs my help. This woman really needs my help. They're willing to hear me out. I'm going to go after them. I'm not going to leave anybody behind. And see, I think our mentality as believers sometimes, we get to a point to where we believe that we're so high on the totem pole with our title or with our you know, maybe de maybe degrees, not always, but we, with all the praise we get all the time, some of us that's in ministry, sometimes, I'm not saying all, sometimes we feel we just don't have time to deal with somebody that want to change for the Lord. You want to change or don't you? I think that's very harsh. And I think it's not playing to the strength of what the scripture is talking about. Why am I bringing this up, this whole thing about the enemy? Because there, there are people in our lives that we feel are our enemies and we treat them as such. And guess what? These people just need to be understood. Just like somebody had to understand you. You have to understand that people are misunderstood. And now I'm not talking about people like Jeffrey Dahmer. That's not my my job. You know, they killed him anyway. But like Charles Manson, I, I think he died recently or something like that. I don't remember, something like that. But my job is to see them and to see them how God would see them. And how would God see them? That's the question you have to answer yourself. Now, you know, the scripture says, you know, be, be harmless, uh, 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 be, 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 um, uh, be wise as a serpent and be harmless as a dove. You know, that don't mean you just be naive and just let people in your life and, um, you know, and just, uh, you know, um, oh, everything is good. Oh, hallelujah. You got to do all that. What I'm saying is be careful who you say is your enemy. And another reason I'm bringing that up is because I had a conversation with a, a liberal uh, individual and we had some differences and he said something to me, he said, well, you know what? You people hate us anyway. So we'll never come to a medium uh, uh, level, level ground. I said, no, that's not it. I listened to him though. I said, why do you think I hate you? Number one, you're a Christian. I'm not. Number two, you believe in this, this, and that, and I don't. So automatically you hate me. We're enemies. Really, I'm like, really, like I'm Batman, you're Joker, or something like that. Like we're, right? We're, we're enemies like that. Like, what? This is what the media has done to us, uh, family and friends. The media is the enemy, really, of the people. Now you gotta understand who your enemy is. You got to understand the media. I'm not saying the people reporting it because they have to do that or they lose their job. And as you guys seen recently, there's a lot of whistleblowers that came out and said, Fox, CNN, MS, they're coming out the woodwork saying, listen, this is wrong. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And so that's why when this individual said that to me, I thought, oh, God, I'm, I'm really feeling some type of way now. Because in my arguing, in my defense, in my discussion, and me want to be right, 
this gentleman felt that he I hated him and also all those that believe like me. I'm gonna take my 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 um y'all see that? I'm gonna take my sip. It's my zero Gatorade. I gotta get it. Mm -hmm. So refreshing. My God. Woo! All right, here we go. Here we go. So only got a few more minutes, guys. I just want to get on here because it really disturbed me how we how we dish out God's word sometimes, how we dish out uh, uh, our own our own grievances or our complaints about what we like and don't like, and we say and we say, oh, because God, don't you know you can use any topic in the world and bring this scripture into it? You can misuse this word. And we got to stop misusing the word, okay? Stop scaring people into Christianity, okay? Stop scaring people to want to know who Jesus is. I don't remember or ever, ever reading that Jesus scared an entire thousands of people to follow him. I believe he was just a regular guy speaking to regular people, trying to find out how he can help them in their journey. And then once he was able to help them in their journey, then he said, I am he, I'm him, I'm Messiah. I was the one that they were saying was coming. That's me. He didn't say, that's who I am. Look at me. You know why? Because Jesus understood that people are not going to, they don't care what you got to say until they know how much you care. And Jesus looked at people with compassion, man. You know, we look at people with judgment, instant judgment. God judges sin, not his people. God judges that. And guess what? Just so you know, everybody is a sinner. Now, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So all have missed the mark. And that, that Greek word is missing the mark, like an arrow being shot. Woo! Woo, or darts, you're throwing darts and, you, and you're missing the bullseye. We're all that way. We all sin, we do something. We sin against ourselves. We sin against our community. We sin against God. Every, every day we do this. Some is uh, 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 omit we, 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 the sins that we don't even realize we're doing. Then some we commit on purpose. We know we're doing it like, ah, I do it, I don't care. This Bible says, if you believe in this Bible, you, some people say they're they're a believer, but they don't they don't want to listen to what God is saying because they only believe what they feel. So here we go. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. I'm so glad God shared gave me mercy. You guys have no idea. God has given you mercy. God has mercy for you. He had mercy for me. He has mercy for your enemies. I don't care if it's the Taliban. I don't if that's what you think your enemy is. I don't care if it's if it's the Pakistanis or if it, if it's if, if if it's the 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 is the the so-called Israel uh, 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 Israelis, the so-called Jewish nation, the so-called uh, 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 Palestinians, the so-called. I don't care who you think you are. Germans, Chinese, uh, the Asians. I don't care who you think. The Bible says here, mercy. Be merciful before you, because your father was merciful to you. Don't you guys remember in the scripture, in the gospels, they're talking about the slave that owed another slave some money and the judge forgave that slave, which it, it was amount to be a million dollars, right? If we added up the numbers today and that slave left, left court and went and found his other uh, fellow slave Right, that owed him five bucks and demanded his money, tried to wanted to kill him. Don't you guys understand the concept? Why was Jesus saying these things? He's saying, if God gave you mercy, if God gave you these these, um, if God gave you these perks, you need to pass them down to the next man. That is the problem, guys. And this is why people 
<sighs> this is why people have a problem with religion because it's the religion that makes God look bad, not God. God don't make himself look bad, man. It's us. It's us. And that's that's where I'm at tonight. So we oh man, I, I, I went I went a little bit tonight. Um I will be traveling next week. So uh, don't take it to the throne. We'll be live on Facebook, but I will have if you go to uh alandebishop.podbean.com. I'll put that up here on the screen here. Um, if you go to alandabishop.podbean.com, you'll be able to, hold on, let me let me get my little banners up. You'll be able to, um, it, there it is. You'll be able to listen to my weekly podcast. I'll do it from my hotel room. And now I have a little podcast that I'll do then. Um, so if you want to hear the podcast, I'm, I'm going to be leading up to, what we're going to be talking about here. We're going to be talking about this corruption that's going on, man, because as, as people are picking sides, we need to pick the side of what the truth is and what's going on. But this is the problem, guys. We don't, we're so, what's the word I'm looking for? My God, we are so self-righteous. We don't want to admit that we're wrong. We did something wrong. I messed up. I messed up. I did something wrong. You know what? I messed up. I did lie about that. You know what? What I said to you in the scripture was wrong. I shouldn't have never said that. Um, and did you guys know that you can believe in a scripture very strongly, conservatively, and still have mercy and love for the person that you feel is a greater sinner than you? Did you know that? I hope you know that. I hope you know that whatever sin you commit, God looks at, at it all the same. It's the same level, okay? Murder, and I'm talking about murder, uh, uh, killing innocent. That That's murder, okay? Not defending yourself is murder. You defended yourself. Murder is killing without any, uh, hear me, man, and I'm talking. Come on, man. Yes, Ashton, we 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 have to. Uh, we will do one real soon. But I think I want you on with this gentleman I'm going to have uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going to be talking about uh, all this thing that's going on. And uh, um, like I said, a lot of people are angry with me because I, I'm I'm not claiming that I'm a Republican. I'm I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I am an American voter, and I care about the truth. So I'm a conservative as well. And conservatives are not Republicans. Y'all need to know that. Conservative is an ideal, okay? Republican is a is a party, okay? Is a, is a a club, okay? Uh, a bunch of ideas, okay? Like the Democrat Party. So it's a party, and only politicians can claim that. Thank you, Ashton, for opening my mind on that. Only politicians can claim that because that's what they are, and that's what their job is. Your job as an American is to vote and to vote for truth and to vote to keep things balanced. That's your job. Young man, man, woman, black man, Mexican man, woman. And I'm saying man, I don't have to say woman, but y'all know what I'm saying. Asian, Mexican, Latino. Uh, 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 I hate saying black and white because that means nothing. That's so bland. That's so somebody gave us that. That's not, you know, we're just American, man. Okay, there we go. Not all people in Africa, that's a whole nother subject. We'll talk about that later. A lot of people don't understand. That is true, Ashwin. If, you, if you're doing what's right, if you, that's how you know you're doing what's right because you got haters. A lot of people hate the fact, oh, man, you pulled away from the movement. No. I pulled in the I pulled in the right area, and some of y'all need to come along with me uh, because if you do that, you will control the outcome of all elections. Uh oh, you, you ain't got to worry about a voter machine. If we stop voting just because I'm a Republican, just because I'm a I'm a Democrat, let me tell you guys something. 
President Trump only ran as a Republican because it, that's the, really the only two platforms. The independent platform is not large enough. Um, and the Republican Party is the same as the Democrat Party. I don't know why y'all don't see it. It's the same thing. All you got to do is look at history. And, and I'm not talking about in 1800s. I'm talking about now. All you have to do is watch how they vote. If you see how they vote, you're going to understand that they're only tricking us. They're only tricking us. So as an American, you need to say to yourself, Americans need to get, get together and say, nobody's getting voted in until we get the doggone truth and until we balance this thing out. When they know they have no more support from either side, you stop calling yourself a Republican and a Democrat. You know what happens? They're going to really start listening to you. You know why? Because they have to. Uh-oh, I'm speaking something that's the truth. How do I know that? Because I've spoken to some politicians, and they've told me that in a nutshell. They represent the Republican uh, uh, political party, not you. They represent the Democratic Party, not you. And a lot of that is their own agenda. I'm gonna just slow clap because I'm 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 blowing it out the water tonight. I you you don't take it to the throne tonight, so you don't re, if you don't know where you're at tonight, you don't take it to the throne. And I'm your host, Alan Duh Bishop. Okay, Duh, right? So let me finish here and saying this: Who is your enemy? How do I love my enemy? Peter asked this question, how many times, Jesus, do I have to forgive my brother? Some of you guys, I want you to Google that. I want you to read that scripture. Because I'm not going to give you the number, okay? But Jesus pretty much, well, this is what Jesus told him. You always forgive your brother. You always forgive your brother. 70 times 7. 70, he, Jesus gave a number out there. It's forever. See, Peter was asking carnally. What Peter was saying is, there's something I shouldn't forgive, right? And Jesus said, no. If, I, if my father forgave every sin, and I'm about to die for every sin, buddy, you better forgive him too. You better forgive. If we just did a few things and stop and stop being many gods, <laughs> that's why guys hear me. I'm gonna say this, and I gotta get out of here. That's why I do not uh, support the cap the Roman Catholic Church. I love the Catholic people. I do not support the Roman Catholic Church. You need to fully do your research. I've been doing it for twenty plus years. I do not support the Roman Catholic Church. I do not support the leadership of having a pope, somebody that has to go to God for the people. I don't believe that. I don't agree with that. So that's all. I, I want y'all to know my stand on that. And, and if you want to talk to me about it, let's talk about it. I don't support the Roman Catholic catholic church the leadership i love the catholic people those that attend catholic church i love the people I, but i do not agree with the roman catholic church hear it and hear it again okay that's all i'm saying i don't hate them i don't agree with their leadership Okay, all right, I got to get out of here. But before I do, I want to say thank you guys for supporting Take It to the Throne. If you want to go ahead and you, you want to go ahead and, and, and bless the ministry and you want to give something to the ministry, um, we're going to be doing some cool things in the future, uh, getting my merch together. I, I'm very busy on another project that I'll be doing in California. Um, 
October 23rd and 24th in Vallejo, California at Salado County Fairgrounds. If you want to know more about that, won't you message me um, or, yeah, message me. Uh, and if you know me, you can text me and we can talk about it. But you can go ahead and support. You can support the ministry by giving to our cash app. There's our cash app right there. Our Venmo's right there as well. And take it to the throne. And I would appreciate it. Thank you for those that have already given. You've blessed me. You've blessed the ministry. If you see, I'm I'm doing some changes. I got some um, other stuff coming because of you guys have truly blessed me. And I thank you for my supporters. You guys are my donors. You guys are my sponsors. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, and I appreciate you. I pray for you every day. I pray for you constantly that God would, 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 would uh, grow you, that God would prosper you, and that he would expand your territory. So I want to thank you guys for being on Take It to the Throne tonight. And I will see you guys next week, uh, God's willing. I'll be traveling next week. Uh, I'll be going into Nevada next week. I uh, got some business there. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And God, remember, is always on the throne. So always take your problems to the throne. Never let anybody stop you from going to God. And and, I, let's, and, and as a preacher, I want to end fully with this. I don't care what you've done in life. I don't care what your thought process is. God wants to be your friend. Matter of fact, he's he desires to love you. He desires to, 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 to wrap his arms around you. He desires for you to speak with him. I'm telling you now, there is no sin you're committing now or you will commit that God would give up on you. God loves you. He cares about you. I'm not saying that. So you can run to a church and put your hands up and scream, hallelujah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that because it's true. If there was no church buildings, I would still say this. If there was nowhere, no pastors, no leadership anywhere, I would still say this, what God has said in this scripture. So I want you to know there's no agenda here. I just want you to know how much God loves you and go to him and his arms are wide open for you. I don't care what your lifestyle is. I don't care what you're up to. Run to God because he loves you. And listen. God does not want to be your enemy, and he does not see you as his enemy. He loves you. Hey, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm gone. You've been listening to Take It to the Throne, Facebook Live, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all over the place. Thank you, guys. God bless you. And guess what? Support Take It to the Throne. Support Alan the Bishop. And listen, man, I guarantee you God's going to bless you for that. This is good ground to put good seed in. God bless you. I got to get out of here. I'm out.